Denise Hoban back again from Skipjack Jewelry and I'm here today to follow up on a video I did a couple of weeks ago where I showed you how to make a stamp. This particular stamp is the letter A and how you can go from creating a stamp like this into creating a really pretty piece of silver jewelry like this. Um, I use it calling a product or I make it using a product called uh, PMC which stands for precious metal clay and it's really easy to use and fun to use and it's addicting once you start so um, before I get started though on the video on how to do the clay I didn't do a really good job last time of showing you what the little stamp that I made looks like so it's got a little back I created the actual stamp holder with UV resin so I was able to get it done like that the stamp holder and then I just stuck the actual poly um, photopolymer resin um, stamp. I glued it right inside the um, UV resin uh, stamp holder. Anyways, so we're going to use this stamp to make a pretty piece of jewelry like this. So hold on, I'll get started on how to tell you how to do that. So what is precious metal clay or PMC? According to Wikipedia, metal clay is a crafting medium consisting of very small particles of metal such as silver, gold, bronze, or copper, mixed with an organic binder and water for use in making jewelry, beads, and small sculptures. Originating in Japan in 1990, metal clay can be shaped just like any soft clay or by hand using molds. I feel like it has kind of the texture of silly putty. Um, after drying, the clay can be fired in a variety of ways, such as in a kiln or with a handheld gas torch or a gas stove, depending on the pond, the type of clay that you're using. The binder burns away, leaving the pure sintered metal. Shrinkage of, a, of between 8% and 30% normally occurs, but that depends on the product being used. I normally use two different types of silver PMC and mix them together. When I first started working with PMC, I worked with PMC3 and I really, really liked it. But I also found that I really liked the more flexible nature of the PMC Flex too. The PMC3 by itself is kind of brittle uh, before you torch it. So now I mix together um, both the PMC3 and the PMC Flex and the combo works perfectly for me. And when you're done torch firing, um, all final products can be hallmarked as fine silver or .999. Prep your work tools with olive oil so that the PMC does not stick. You can also use olive oil or water to add moisture to the clay if it has dried out. I'm prepping my mat, stamp, circle template, and my cake fondant roller. I love the cake fondant roller because it came with two different gaskets um, that fit on it that are perfect for rolling out the clay the size or the depth that I want. I first depress my stamp imprint, then I use the circle template to create the outer border. I made the circle template by using UV resin in one of my circle molds. I then slightly sand the inside edge of the circle so that it is not as deep as the outer edge of the ring. So that way it leaves a border mark but doesn't completely cut through the clay. 
I store my PMC in an old oil of Olaid container to keep it from drying out. I use a cocktail straw to make a hole uh, for the jump ring so that I can attach it to the necklace. My clay was too moist when I started this project, so I don't normally do this, but I'm using my heat gun now to dry it out enough to remove it from the silicone mat. The clay must be completely dried before torch firing. You can leave it sit for hours, or you can speed up the process by using a cup warmer. All right, so the next part of the process is we've got our um, piece of PMC clay rolled out and our, um, oof, it's hot there, um, our A embedded in it or stamped in it. And the next part, I need to let it cool a little bit and then I'm gonna sand around the edges just to kind of fine tune it before we actually uh, torch fire it. All right, there's nothing fancy about sanding it. I have an emery board and I'm gonna put on my old lady glasses, not those, but these. And just lightly sand the edges. And you know, if you are smart, you would have, um, a silicone mat underneath it so I could catch the droppings because whatever I'm shaving off on the silver can be reconstituted with water and um, used again. But I'm being lazy here just because I've already started the video. You can still sand after you uh, fire it, but it is so much easier getting all the edges perfectly smooth before you torch fire it. And I don't make sure everything is perfect because I actually like the uh, a little bit rustic kind of look. General rule of thumb here is that you torch fire it for a good seven minutes when it gets to the glowing point. So it normally takes, depends on how thick uh, the PMC is that you're dealing with. Um, maybe a minute to get it started and then a full seven minutes. Um, I, this one's kind of thin, so it might not take a full seven minutes. I just use my gut um, and look at it. And if you torch fire it too long, you will actually melt the silver. So um, use a little caution there. Okay, I'm gonna set my timer for seven minutes. And I'll start it as soon as I get the little bit of red glow. I'm gonna turn off my lights so you can see the red glowing. Just a regular butane torch, normally used for creme brulee in the kitchen. And this is all the, the fire means that all the organic material is cooking out. And generally when you do this, you get a 10% reduction in the actual size of the original uh, piece. Boy, I have this up kind of high. Um, the piece that you rolled out so take that into account when you're doing your pieces it will reduce by about 10 percent oops i should have started that a minute ago because it heated up really fast and i'm just going to keep it rolling and not hold it in one spot for too long because if i hold it in one spot for too long it'll um, melt that part of the piece right away. Actually, this is really, really thin. I might not have to cook at seven at all. And your eyes will kind of, um, if you do this after a while, you kind of get used to what it looks like. I, I have melted the silver before and it gets this kind of a shiny look right before it starts to melt. So you want to back off before you get it to that point. 
if you don't cook the metal long enough, it'll be really brittle and you can actually take the piece and break it. But don't try to break it, otherwise you ruin your piece. Let this cool naturally or throw it in a little bit of water and it will sizzle. Oh. Why is it so dark in here? Because I'm videotaping and now you're going to be on my video. <laughs> Give me a good light up. No, I'm done. I'm done with what I was doing. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> Put several drops of patina in a container of hot water. Place the fine silver pendant in the mixture until the desired darkness appears. Um, once that's complete, then rinse the piece in baking soda water to get the patina process to stop darkening. 